Hi everyone, welcome to P's and G's. Today we continue following the story of Ruth. Our Bible reading is from Ruth 1 verses 6 to 18 and focuses on the theme of loyalty. We'll start with our prayer for the world, then have our reading. I'll share the next part of our story before we have this week's activity, which is holding hands, paper people. First, it's time for our prayer and reading. Morning. Today we are going to pray for California. But before that, does anyone know where California is? I'll give you a quick second to think about it. Answer time. It is in America. We're going to pray for them today because we've got wildfires happening, which is just not a nice thing. It's happening because it's so hot and the trees are just catching on fire. So let's join in prayers now. So Lord of all creation, today we pray for California from the tallest to the smallest for peace, joy and love now and always. Amen. Good morning. We're going to read this morning from the book of Ruth and it's going to be chapter 1. Um, verses 6 to 18. It's about Na Naomi and Ruth returning to Bethlehem from Moab. Sometime later, Naomi heard that the Lord had blessed his people by giving them a good harvest. So she got ready to leave Moab with her daughters-in-law. They started out together to go back to Judah. But on the way, she said to them, Go back and stay with your mothers. May the Lord be as good to you as you have been to me and to those who have died. And may the Lord make it possible for each of you to marry again and have a home. So Naomi kissed them goodbye. But they started crying and said to her, No, we will not go with you. We will go with you. To our people. You must go back, my daughters, Naomi answered. Why do you want to come with me? Do you think that I could have sons again for you to marry? Go back home, for I am too old to get married again. Even if I thought there was still hope, and so got married tonight, and had sons, would you wait until they had grown up? Would this keep you from marrying somebody else? No, my daughters, you know that's impossible. The Lord has turned against me, and I feel very sorry for you. Again, they started crying. Then Orpah kissed her mother-in-law goodbye and went back home. But Ruth held on to her. So Naomi said to her, Ruth, your sister-in-law has gone back, gone back to her people and to her God. Go back with her. But Ruth answered, Don't ask me to leave you. Let me go with you. Wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you live, I will live. Your people will be my people and your God will be my God. Wherever you die, I will die, and that is where I will be buried. May the Lord's worst punishment come upon me if I let anything but death separate me from you. When Naomi heard that Ruth was determined to go with her, she said nothing more. Thanks so much. Last week in the story of Ruth, Naomi and her family had to flee the famine in Israel to go to the land of Moab. There, Naomi's sons found romance and married some local Moabite women, Ruth and Oprah. Sadly, all the men in their family died. Naomi had heard through the rumour mill that the Lord's blessing had returned to Israel and that the famine was over. So up they got and headed back to Israel. Naomi was finally going home. Naomi turned round to her daughters-in-law and said, What are you doing? Go back to your homes. May the Lord bless you for the way you have dealt with death and with me. May you find rest and a new husband. And then she kissed them. Oprah and Ruth raised their voices and cried, No, we will come with you to your people. Naomi 
stopped them in their tracks. Ladies, go home. I have no sons to offer you. Even if I found you a new husband, which I am far too old to do, would you wait all those years to marry them? I have experienced so much pain and loss, but for your own sake, please go back to your mother's. Oprah lifted her head, kissed Naomi and headed on her way. But Ruth clung to Naomi. Ruth refused to go with her sister-in-law and she said, where you go, I will go. Where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people. Your God will be my God. Where you die, I will die. Let nothing but death part us. It was quite clear to Naomi that nothing was going to dissuade Ruth and so on they went. How many times have we made choices to be in a place that will give us what we want? Ruth was brave in keeping her commitment to Naomi staying with her instead of looking to her own interests. Ruth was determined to stick with her mother-in-law. She refused to leave her side and in doing so took a great step of faith and courage. By accepting Naomi, she was agreeing to follow her culture and her God. She was at risk of not ever getting married or having society standing again, but she was faithful to Naomi and to God. The women returned where townspeople looked rather strangely at Ruth and recalled this family who left now shrunk. Ruth decided to help provide and she went to glean in a field. In those days, farmers were not supposed to pick up every bit of wheat when they harvested crops. That way, widows or people who needed extra help could come and sift out the extra pieces of grain so that they could have food. We will find out next week who that field belonged to. Family ties were important in that time period. If someone was in trouble and needed help, family members had an obligation to take care of them, even if they were not related by blood, and even if they had never met the other person. Our mystery field owner saves Ruth and Naomi literally taking their shattered lives and putting them back together. Since Ruth had showed faithfulness to God and to her family and wouldn't leave Naomi, God took care of them and he provided for them. So what will happen between Ruth and our mystery field owner? Well, we'll find out next time. At the end of this video, you can listen to the song My Guardian, which is in the description below. After you've taken some time to reflect, you can continue to praise God by singing the song, Let's Get a Little Crazy. Join in the actions and celebrate that we're all in this together, just like Ruth stuck with Naomi and helped provide for her. We're now going to have our activity for this week. Hi, Rachel. Hi, boys and girls. So this week for our activity, we are going to make a paper chain of people. Isn't that cool? Now look at them. You can decorate them. You can make them into your friends. You can make them happy. You can make them surprised. You can make, oh look, this guy's sad. He's sad. You can dress them up in whatever outfit you want. You can draw your friends on them. You can um, do whatever you want with them. So let's find out how to make it. First of all, all you need is a piece of paper. Normal A4 piece of paper, it can be coloured if you want, if you had colour, that would be cool. Or just plain white is also fine. So what you have to do, come and have a look, is you get a piece of paper and you fold it in half along the long part of the page, just like this. And then you take a pair of scissors and you cut along the line. Now I have already done that, I cheated. So here's one I've already made. And then once you've done that, you're gonna fold the paper in half, long wise, like this. Then you're gonna fold it in half again, like this. And then you're gonna fold it in half again. 
So you should have something that looks just like this. Now when you've done that, unfold it again. So it's got all these little bends in it. And then what you have to do is you go along and you fold along the bends, but one bit after the other like this, rather than in half like you did before. And you just follow all the little lines and do it like this. And this is gonna be your little chain of people. And they'll all be the exact same size. Like so. Then what you have to do is you take a pencil and you draw your little person. So you draw a little head and then give them a neck and then give them some nice long arms. And you have to draw the arms right out to the very edge of the paper. So they don't have any hands, which is a little bit weird, but that's okay. Then you finish the arms, give them a body, you give them some legs, put a pair of trousers on them maybe, there we go. Then give them a little pair of shoes. I'm gonna draw my favorite pair of trainers of mine. So they should look something like this. It's okay if it looks a little bit rough because then you're gonna cut it out. Now this bit's a little bit tricky, so you might need to get someone to help you because there's lots of little bends and scissors are sharp. So you're gonna cut around the outline, cut around the head, and try and keep all the paper together as you're cutting. Now, the secret is, when you're doing the arms, you just go at the edge like that. So the bit with the folds. They should all still be attached at the end, you see? That is the secret that makes them all be stuck together at the end. Cut out the leg, the body, the other arm. Keeping it nice to the edge. And then you're almost there round the nice favourite shoes. Oh, it's so tight, there we go. And then, oh my goodness, there he is. This is the moment of truth. You pull it apart and you have, how many people have we got? Should we count? We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight people all in a row. And all you have to do is get some um, colouring in pencils or felt tips. And that is when you give them some nice cool outfits. You give them an eyes and a nose and a mouth and you're finished can't wait to see what they look like please remember to share your photos using the hashtag or email them directly to me here are some photos we've been sent this week just a reminder that all our attachments are in the description below our video including our sheets for families Hope these are helpful. Thanks so much for joining us today. See you next week. Bye!